the <clears throat> where the oxygen is staying up there. So it's a little bit in, in the middle of the sun. Hey Ryan. Ryan, say hi, Ryan. Hello. <laughs> Ew. All right, welcome to Rocky welcome. Produce Company. <clears throat> this part, Rocky Produce actually has two sections here. Side and the, on that side, they have it all the way on the end. They both do separate kinds of products. So here, you've got the shelf-stable products. You've got the carrots, uh, not carrots, uh, onions, potatoes, watermelons, things that don't need refrigeration. And that's one of the cool things when you come down here is not everything is stored in coolers. You know, watermelons don't like it in refrigeration. They don't do well. Tomatoes, obviously, you know, tomatoes don't either. But the other uh, onions don't need to be refrigerated. Potatoes, right? These things, actually, if you refrigerate them, changes their composition, their chemical. Potatoes, for example, convert all their starches to sugar. You get a completely different kind of potato if you store it for a week in the refrigerator than storing it properly at 45 degrees. So as we walk down, we see all these big coolers filled with product. You got a 36 degree cooler, you got a 50 degree cooler, and they're all separated by temperature, different humidities, lettuces and all that have a high humidity level. Just that they're particularly trying to market here, okay? So here you've got... These actually fall out of the ground, so they pick them up. So these are hand harvested, whereas those the machine picks up. Different kinds of sweet potatoes. Some of these are new varieties. Then here you can see some of their examples of the different size of potatoes. You know, you have a 50 count here. This one is a 60 count, 70, 80 counts. Fingerlings, mixed fingerlings. And down over here, you've got kiln dried. These kiln dried sweet potatoes also come in size ranges. And you can see when these potatoes are first picked, they kind of look green. They put these inside of a large building and they run fans and they dry them out. That creates that hard outside orange skin. strawberries, raspberries, blueberries, back and we buy them at school because it's important for competencies. But we know when you start doing your cost analysis and you get ready to, to do your overall analysis of what was spent, we know that Chef Decker's going to spend more money in the winter than he will when May comes or April comes or when September's here because berries are so much cheaper and better quality. Now I'm struggling to find good strawberries and good blackberries. I really won't get any good strawberries until Florida starts with spring training for baseball starts. So you're talking March before I get strawberries that are really good quality and starting to come into season again. And so we deal with these ebbs and flows. And remember, for every extra dollar you spend, you're, lo you know, you're losing five because it's a 20% food cost. So every dollar means five. So if you can save a dollar here, it's really five dollars so this is how restaurants survive in this competitive market is calculating out get out of the strawberry raspberries and let's start bringing in well so what would be some things that are in season what do you think just gonna the ask him that are all done. <laughs> i was gonna be like what's in season grapes maybe right we're gonna see it when we walk through here apples apples are next level okay so apples are good Oranges are now coming into season as well, right? Florida, California. And so, if you're running a place that has a lot of pastries, this should be where you're sliding to. Now, you'll still have a few raspberries to put on top of the cheesecake, but you're not going to do, you know, the, the big strawberry, raspberry, blueberry desserts anymore. You're going to get away from those. You're not, you're not going to do a cobbler, right? You're not going to do things like that. You're going to move into, you know, orange crepes, or some kind of other 
seasonality. Yes. And then what 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 is the best type of like produce to buy like fruit wise in the winter time? For which area? Just like like your, so so you always want to think about cold, seasonality. So yeah, think like about up what's here. been harvested lately. So you got all your root vegetables, carrots, on, onions, celery, parsnip, potatoes. These are key items that are just being harvested now in store. Apples, pears. Pears are another good one for desserts. Um, there are some specialty fall things like pomegranates, persimmons, right? And then you always have the ever-reliable tropical fruits that never go out of season. Pineapple, okay, mangoes, papayas. These are always available because they don't have really a season, right? They're always being produced. I shouldn't say they don't have a season, but it's not as drastic as what we have with watermelons. So the price is pretty steady. Pretty for those stable, yeah. Here. So you know that's where the transition. And you get up, if you go to a restaurant that really follows seasonality right now, you see a lot of tropical fruit, a lot of oranges on the menu. You see a complete transition until spring. Here's a forty cup. Can you add any more? Say this to that one. That's a big potato. Root vegetables.